Oh snap, we're live. Welcome to a bunch of bits on my desk. Not good bits, chunky bits. Um, welcome to Intro to Plush Making. I am watching the flank stage screen and realizing there's a massive delay, so I'm going to shrink that on my screen and just watch my original OBS. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, so there is a delay, obviously, so I'm just going to pull up the chat on my phone. So I'm not really going to do, like, an end of the panel Q&A. Feel free to just ask your questions along the way, and I do have the chat pulled up on my phone here so I can catch them. We can definitely leave a few minutes if you guys need at the end. Um, I do have my co-host here with me as well, by the way. Tiny Cat is here to hang out, and she is not taking questions or critique at this time. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, welcome everybody. Again, pop your questions in if you got them. I'm basically going to kind of talk about my process, how I got started making these big chunguses right here. Tiny cat, no, you can't play with it. I'm um, talking about a bit of basic pattern drafting because I do make my own patterns at this point. Um, embroidery, what I used to do before embroidery. You don't need an embroidery machine to make super cool plush. Um, and just some of the materials I use. So let's dive in. So I started making plush, I want to say professionally about a year ago. Um, my first plush was actually a rarity plush that I donated to Van Hoover last year. Um, but I've been dabbling in like Pokemon plush and other fandoms here and there long before. But those were just very basic and simple, usually like really basic floppy beanie patterns, kind of like these little cuties. So it's like a super basic two piece pattern. Um, and at that time I didn't have an embroidery machine. So I had to do this crazy thing called applique. So applique is a zigzag stitch. So you might see it on like your hoodies, like on the cuffs of a sweater where there's a seam, you'll see like a back and forth zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. And that's just a reinforcement. But if you make the zigzag really, really tight, like an accordion, it makes a really thick embroidery line basically. So that's, there's a particular plush maker I actually really like, uh, Firefly Twinkle Toes, if you check her out on DeviantArt. Um, she doesn't even use an embroidery machine, it's incredible. Her work is absolutely stunning. Um, so, where was it? I had it here, there it is. So I was not very good, it's very tedious work, but I've kept this to kind of remind myself where I come from. So this is what applique is. You can see I would cut pieces of felt out in the colors and then I would tightly zigzag stitch it on. It's very frustrating. And it's not a great result, but it's, it's what you have at the time. It's working with what's available to you with the skill level you have, right? Um, from there, I did eventually get an embroidery machine, which is sitting right here. Uh, it's a combo machine, which is nice. I will show that off in a little bit. Um, and then I learned to embroider from there to create these little chunguses. Hey man, there's nothing wrong with factory plush, okay? Um, you know, some of the factory plush that I see out there, like the, the knockoffs you get from eBay, some of them look better than the like Hasbro ones. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, from there, I then would venture into making my own patterns, which can seem very intimidating. Have any of you guys ever tried to make patterns or even bought a pattern even and made one? Um, or if you have your own plush, you can see that it is a side body piece, a side body piece, a neck basically all down the belly to the bum piece, four hooves, and then you have your head, which is generally two pieces and a middle. Some people only do it as two pieces. That's a bit of a preference at that point. Um, but it, when it comes to making your own pattern for this, it just, it comes to trial and error. Um, this was my second attempt at making my OC Lumi. You can see the head, I didn't do the nose right. So it kind of looks like she ran into a wall and I'm okay with that. It's just for me, so I don't mind. But this was my first body attempt. This was my first attempt at a pattern. Um, I'm showing this off to you guys so you can have a laugh. 
to show that we all start somewhere. She's got the skinniest little legs ever. I don't think she's eaten a sandwich in her life. Um, this head is like, she's a bobblehead. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, everything is wrong with it. But this kind of shows that you just keep learning and improving, right? So you go from this to this to this, and you just keep making steps forward. So enough about these idiots. Get out of here. Get off my table. Tiny cat, stay there. I have so much stuff. So, you might be wondering some of the stuff you might want to invest in before you start making, even considering making a plush. Well, first of all, you're going to want a sewing machine, first and foremost. Uh, some people do hand sew them. Props to them. I am not that patient. I, zero out of ten, would yeet myself into a bus. That is just way too tedious. Yes, sandwiches will make your legs thicker. Uh, legs for days, ten out of ten. Chef's kiss. Um... Yeah, so some of the stuff you're going to look at investing in. Rarity, you're in my way. You got a big fat butt. She got a big fat butt. This is my uh, my cup that I used to store a bunch of stuff. I bought it when I was in, actually in Nagoya in Japan. <laughs> Shiny magic carp. They're having a big magic carp festival. It was the greatest thing ever of my life. Um, so I used to keep my odds and ends. So some of the things you're going to want to snag to even start making a basic pattern, say you just buy one on Etsy, is good sewing scissors, like for cutting fabric. Um, I think I spent 20 bucks on these, like you don't need to go, you don't need to break the bank, but just get one specifically for fabric. Um, if you cut paper and other stuff with these, it just dulls the blade really fast and they end up just being garbage and it just shreds your fabric and you're just going to get frustrated. On that note, I have these fabric scissors as well. I cut paper with them, and now they are my paper scissors because they cannot cut fabric. I also have some tiny scissors. Tiny scissors are super handy for uh, trimming all your threads or cutting little corners, little bits and bobs. So that's all I have for scissors. It's not super fancy. Paper, bits and bobs, fabric. Um, I have my seam ripper. Very handy because I screw up a lot, heck up a lot. I heck up a lot, everybody. Um, just for ripping out any threads, if you like mess up a spot, super easy to fix. I have a white uh, dressmaker pencil. I use this to trace my patterns out, but I'm also not super fancy. Depending on the fabric or like the color of fabric, I will also just use a blue ballpoint pen. I know a lot of makers will harp on me for this, don't do it, but. If you do it super lightly, think like feather touch, like you're just almost sketching it on, you won't have any issues. A lot of makers will note that it will bleed into your fabric, like it'll bleed out in your seams. But if you do it super light, it's pretty much negligible and that makes, I use that as my seam allowance so I don't have to worry about that bleeding. Um, I have tweezies, little tweezies. This is everything I just have in this cup, like, and I use this stuff on the daily for working on plush. Uh, I use my tweezers for turning out very small portions, so if I'm working on a plush and say I can't turn this corner out, I'll just put my tweezers in and just kind of give it a, the old jam, the old jim jab. Um, other than that, this is just some bits and bobs that I've accumulated. But yeah, definitely get good scissors for cutting fabric. You will regret it if you don't. A seam ripper, absolutely. And paper scissors. You don't need the tiny ones right away. You can get away with just using your fabrics, but it is easier with the tiny ones just to get into places. So, I mean, that's pretty standard stuff that you need for sewing for anything, whether it's plush making, making t-shirts, whatever. Pretty chill. Um, yeah, moving on from sizzies and stuff, you're going to move into threads. So I use a variety of thread. I'm not super picky but you will notice some sewing machines are. Some sewing machines will be running the thread through like normal and then it starts just shredding down where the needle is and you're like, why Why is there a nest of thread here? That shouldn't be there. Don't do it. And it does it. Um, some of them are just super finicky. Um, so I, I mostly use dual duty thread. That's probably one of the most common ones most of the makers use. It's just, you get it at pretty much any store, Walmart, sewing shops, Michaels. Um, this is just another random bread. What is it? Mettler. Um, 
I do actually have a spool of glow in the dark thread as well. I uh, got this off Amazon. I didn't realize how big it was going to be, so I'm not sure how to use this yet with my machine because it's huge. But yeah, there's tons of different threads. I, for all my hand sewing, I actually use this thread here. You can see how thick it is. It's like thick like floss. Uh, it is upholstery thread. It is intended for like big heavy drapes. And the reason I use this for all the hand sewing, as annoying as it is to sew with, is so that when you all yank on your plush and god dang it Rarity, stay here. When you yank on them and snuggle them, take them to con and carry them around, it's that peace of mind that they probably won't have any seams pop. Like that's the biggest thing is making sure none of the seams pop. Um, so I got a little, I got a little drawer right here. I'm just grabbing out a few more bits and bobs. So I'm very handy like that. Handy little drawer. I think that's everything. That's good. Um, on the topic of thread, still, uh, I also buy my embroidery thread mostly on Amazon. Uh, nothing fancy. It's just like the big color set. If there's any other plush makers in this chat, they would probably recognize this particular spool. This is an unopened one. And when I run out of the colors, I just take the color. There is the color code on top. And I just take it to my local sewing shop and I just kind of color match it. And that's kind of how I buy the same one. My phone turned off. What's going on in chat, guys? Um, if you're looking for waffles, I'm just seeing your comment here about drawing your pattern out. So I use the ballpoint pen. I have water tested my pattern, like my fabric with the ballpoint with how lightly I draw and I haven't had any bleeding of the ink. But I think if you did have that problem, if that was something that concerned you, there is definitely like specific fabric markers that you can heat like you can iron it away. Tiny cat, you're so cute. She just recurled up and she's so disgusting. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different fabric markers. Like you can again even just find them at Walmart. Um, you can heat wash them or heat press them away with your iron. Some of them you can wash out. Um, some of them just fade over time, which is super handy. I've never used a friction pen, so I'm not sure what that is, but, uh, sure. And yes, I am recording this as well, so I'm sure it will be somewhere. I don't know. I'm just, I was just told to record it. That's what I'm doing. I'm not fancy. Okay. So threads, buy decent threads. Buy stuff you like, don't overthink it. You will get people telling you what they like and other people tell you what you like. And it can get very confusing very fast. At the end of the day, buy what works for you. So again, this is just all suggestions of what I use. Yes, thermal pens, That that is basically what they are, yes. But my biggest suggestion is to make sure you invest in good scissors because you will thank yourself later. I don't know where to upload it or how to do it, but yes. Um, so from materials to making, your next step is your pattern. So I do have my mare pattern here, and I'm going to show you guys just all of the pieces that kind of go into making one of these lovely plush you guys love to order, you know. Um, I, do, I do, of course, get a lot of people that comment sometimes after I give them a quote that it's too expensive. Well, once you know the work that goes in... You're going to put your foot in your mouth, <laughs> you know? So this is where I was, wish I had my second camera, but I don't, but that's okay. So um, if you really can't draw, uh, one thing I know that I, this is how I originally started making my pattern before I started shaping it into what I have is I actually pulled up a screenshot of My Little Pony, like one of the girls on my TV over there and I just put a piece of paper up and I traced the side profile and that's how I kind of got my base to work with and then from there as you make more and more plush you see a little adjustments you have to make which I do have a 
two stages of laying body patterns to show you guys after this, to show you what happens as you just keep making them. You see the different progress. So like I mentioned with my Lumi plush, you have your two body sizes, right? So you cut two of your body. Again, if you're holding a plush right now, you're gonna see these two pieces, one on each side and where the cutie mark is or whatever, right? That makes sense. And from the chest all the way down to the butt, you're probably gonna see this piece of fabric. Tiny cat, are you getting up? What are you doing? You can't, you're gonna step on the laptop. Don't do it. No, oh no, it's a monster. Hurry up, let's go, come on. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so between those two side pieces, you're going to see this fabric piece, though, from the neck to the bum. And this is what separates, basically, those two body pieces. Um, you'll also notice on the inside of the legs, those are separate fabric pieces. So there's two of the front legs. There's also two of the back legs. You've also got your four hooves. Um big fat head which I write so many notes on here because when I embroider which we will get to that I promise I keep thinking I have a half hour slot but I actually have an hour so I'm like oh, I gotta cram it all in I gotta go fast I'm like no 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 we're chilling let's talk about paper patterns because a lot of people don't realize going from a 2d object to a 3d is a lot more than just sewing two pieces of fabric together and drawing the eyes on right so you have your head and I just kind of cut out my base of where I want my eye to be, just like the cutie mark area. Um, and I, I draw, I write general sizes in millimeters, just because my machi machine works in millimeters, so that I know roughly how big I want the eye to be. And then from the head, I have two middle head pieces, right? So this is what goes down the front of the nose here. And this piece runs down the back of the head. So it basically goes like this like a little curve, and then this piece pops out for the nose so that it pops this out nice and 3D. That's basically my body pattern. And then I also have like my wings, like my rainbow, rainbow wing, rainbow dash wings. And if I'm feeling zesty Italian, I do 3D wings by doing a puffy little inner piece. I've got my little ear pattern, which again is really simple. It's just a triangle. Sew it, boom, get out of here little horn and when I do my horns on the paper I mark my lines so that when it folds they match up on each side so that when you then stitch it it does the spiral because I'm all about that spiral but yeah paper patterns like it's it's a lot to just like look at it and have to really consider how to go 3d like you're making this 3D, our 2D mares are becoming a real plush. It's really cool. How would you get the middle piece from the neck to the butt? You mean this piece? So this, this took a lot of practice to get looking good. It is not an easy piece to pattern at first, but once you're once it clicks in your head, that's the biggest thing is once once the patterns start to click, then you can start adventuring from your basic standing pattern to this funky laying rarity pattern. This was a super weird laying pattern to make to a regular laying pattern because they all just kind of become um, the same in that aspect that you have two sides, you have a middle, you have your inner legs go. So to make this, this flat portion here, from here to here, is the length from the top of the neck to basically like the front of the armpit. And then these curves, so how you get these curves is actually from your inner leg. Where are you? Here, because you're attaching your inner leg to this curve, which I can actually show it on this one here. This is just easier. This probably will just make more sense. Oh God. Okay. So you can see this is the inner leg here. This pattern piece is right here, right? 
and it just attaches right along that curve. And that's what brings this in. And then you carry it along and you end up stitching it along the belly and then it goes up into the bum basically. And that's how you get that 3D. I have since changed this pattern, hence this doesn't fit, but you get the idea is that it would just go along here and it basically just brings the two pieces together. And then you get, it tapers right up into the bum. How lewd, I know. Plush making's a little lewd, you guys. But it tapers right up into the bum and that's just how you get it to pull together so that it stands really nice. It's a weird world. It's a weird adventure making plush. So if you do have problems uh, drawing patterns, like if that's just something that you're not comfortable with or you feel that you're just not getting the hang of it, there is quite a few really good like uh, pay to use patterns. If you just go on Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com and type in MLP uh, plush pattern, um, quite a few come up. I know that... Um, God, I don't, I haven't bought any. I know there's a lot. There's also, I believe, a free one actually on DeviantArt. If you Google free My Little Pony plush pattern, um, I believe that comes up. And it's, I've looked at it, and it's, it's very simple. It's what I link to a lot of people that have messaged me that are trying to get into plush making. I'm like, well, here's a free pattern. It's a great way to start so you can understand the basic pattern pieces because it starts with your two sides and the middle piece. It's not super fancy, but it's still really cute and does the job. And I would highly recommend it just to get into it and get a feel for that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's, I can't remember who makes it. And if you're looking for something more advanced, then yeah, I would definitely turn to Etsy and start looking for patterns on there. Uh, if you're not looking to make your own pattern, right? Like nothing says you have to make your own pattern. I've just gotten to that point where because I, there, thank you for linking that, Kaden. Let me just tap on it on my phone here. Because um, I did try that. Oh, nope, that's not the one. It's a specific free one, and they released also um, a pattern for Rainbow Dash's mane and tail, I think, and Fluttershy's or Pinkie Pie's. I can't remember. But it's just a good base. It's like a really good way to get started. And then, you know, after a few cuties, you get hooked on it. That's the joy of plush making. You get hooked on it. Yum. Cola. Two-piece small pone and putting two. It's super hard, right? Um, so I, I made a few normal sized mares like that Lumi and a Rarity and stuff back when I first started. Um, but I mostly actually made these micro beanies. This rarity is not done yet. But I, I made mostly these because I was getting comfortable with my embroidery machine, which we're about to move into. And she's very simple. But they kind of helped me build some confidence. Let's see. Yes, that one there. Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash. Now that is a pretty solid little pattern. Like it's it's basic but it gives you the skills and confidence to start moving forward to do like more advanced techniques, such as like hip gussets, uh, adding darts and stuff, just as you learn more. Um, it's also just a great base pattern to do like your OC or other characters, it's solid. Um, but yeah, I'm, I did a lot of these micro beanies for a while. Like I remember, I think for the first Pony Fest actually, when I was vending, I did a truckload of these little guys because they're just super easy. Right? And it just gets you more comfortable with sewing. Thanks for linking that, though. If anyone is interested, um, C I want to say CLR, but then I think of Billy Mays and, like, CLR cleaning products. <laughs> um, but they linked the Fire and Fluff uh, My Little Pony Free Sewing Pattern. Highly recommend checking out if you want to just give it a try, even. Um, go to the store and pick up some fabric. Um, which brings me then to fabric is a good segue from pattern making. Do it, Kaden. Give it a try. I mean, it's free and it's super cute and you could even modify it if you want, whatever you like. I'm, I'm sure you're going to make something super duper cute. 
But this leads us into fabric. So if you're going to go shopping, Caden, this is for you. Um, there's two types of fabric a lot of plush makers use. One is fleece, which a really awesome plush maker you guys probably recognize in the fandom is fleece is friendship. And she makes some really cute little ponies. She's making a bunch of the uh, uh, rain shine plush right now. She's awesome. Um, I don't personally work with fleece, so I don't have a lot of experience with it. I primarily work with our friend Minky. Um, Minky is super soft and slippery. It's wonderful. I have a pile of it here. So I primarily work with Minky, and I don't know if my webcam will pick it up. But it's super, like you can probably even just tell it's very slippery and soft. Um, some of you probably have, if you have a custom plush that isn't made by Fleece's Friendship, it's probably Minky, because I think she's the only maker that works in fleece, like fully in fleece. Oh, Minky's so nice. I'm just hugging it. Um, yeah, so both fabrics, both Minky and fleece are very stretchy, which is nice, but it's also a nightmare because you have to remember it's stretchy. So when you're cutting your pattern, when you're patterning even, like that's something you have to think about when you're making your patterns, is it's going to stretch. You have to account for like going from this to this because you're stuffing it. Next thing you know, you have like the weirdest lump of a leg in your life <laughs> you, you regret it but it's yeah super stretchy um but the nice thing is minky's only really stretchy one way so like i can't get it to go this way but i can get it to go this way so when you're cutting your fabric you want to make sure you're cutting it the right way and the right way is generally minky you can feel it it's almost like fur like a cat or dog very short fur so it has a direction it goes, and that's called the nap. The nap is the direction the fur goes. And you want the fur to go back like an animal. So when you're cutting your pattern pieces, you have to lay them on the wrong side. And when you're drawing them out, you have to make sure how you have your pattern facing, the fur goes back. That way, when you're petting your plush, the fur goes back, right? Um, fleece is cheaper, so I would, again, I didn't really start with it, but I feel like if I was to, if I was new and like had this kind of assistance, I guess, earlier on in my little plush life, I think I would have started with fleece originally because it is a lot cheaper. Um, uh, Minky, I'm in Canada. Minky for me is like $10 per half yard. That is not a lot of fabric. That makes me like one pony, give or take. So it's not a lot, but it is what it is. Canada. But yeah. Um, does anyone have any other fabrics they have tried using for plush? Um, like, oh, Tiny Cat is playing with a toy under my chair, and it's really cute. Uh, like, if anyone's tried, like, maybe cotton, like, done, like, a patchwork quilt pony, or... I don't know what other fabrics you would use. I can't see anyone using like polyester. That'd be super weird. I could see cotton and doing like a kind of cute co uh, quilt type fabric, but that's about it. Hey, welcome Shafire. We're just talking about some fabrics and I'm just uh, throwing it out to chat. If anyone's used other fabrics, like other than minky and fleece to try and make something. Hey, old pair of shorts. Hey, you know what? That means they had a new life. So that's pretty all right. That's pretty all right. Well, I'm just going to move this tiny cat bed. Well, from fabrics then, we're going to be getting, an, oh, felt. That's a good one. That's right. Um, paper towel. Holy moly. That's hardcore. I can't say I've ever tried paper towel. I do use paper towel sometimes for patterning though, especially mains because of the way it hangs. So I like to use that for cutting and trying to make like funky main shapes. Felt is good though. Um, so from fabric, I'm gonna then go into some of the materials I use. I'm just reaching for some stuff here. I use inside of fabric now. Just have to move some idiot plush around here. Don't fall, don't fall. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So if you have any custom plush, you may notice that they have really firm pieces such as open wings or maybe um, very flat manes or very firm ears like this. Right? Um, so some of the materials makers will use is not just fabric. There's going to be all kinds of interesting stuff hiding inside your plush you didn't even know they had. One of my favorite things to use is a uh, crafting, like sewing foam. It's not a craft foam for like cosplay. It's, it's not that kind of foam. It is this stuff. I don't know the official name of it because I'm not fancy. I just have it as an auto order with a local supply sewing store. Um, but what I like is it, it's firm, it holds its shape really well, but it, um, it's just very springy still and soft. So it doesn't give like a, a yucky texture to a, a stuffed animal, right? I feel like this would be called bag batting, something you would put in like the bottom of a tote or something. You know what? I get hungry. No, a tiny cat likes to eat the stuffing though. I have a big box of just polyfill stuffing and she loves to eat it. I'm like, what are you doing? That's how you get sick. So I have to keep weights on top of the box now so she doesn't get in it. Some book cola in a cup with ice is just magic. I don't know why. But yeah, this stuff, it's, I feel like it's traditionally used inside. Like if you have a nice tote bag or a duffel bag, this would be in the bottom of it. It's super firm but like flexible, which is good. Uh, another very common thing, and this is most commonly used in long manes. So like Fluttershy's mane, Celestia's mane, Luna's mane, anyone with long uh, rarity as well, like long rarity hair uh, is, oh shit, phone, stay, just stop. Uh, it's quilt batting. So most people know what a quilt is, uh, a big fancy blanket that your grandma makes, that me ma makes, and then uh, on the inside it's kind of puffy and you don't know why, but you love it. It's because inside is this fluffy, it's like flat stuffing. It's really cool. Um, it's quite strong, but it's just puff and it's awesome. And you can sew right onto it, which is awesome. So you just cut out your, your hair piece you can slap it on top, cut this out, and just sew it, and it's great. And that's how you get a nice puffy mane that just... Tiny cat, she's just playing with a toy and driving me up the wall. I don't really have any... I don't have anything around me with batting in it right now. But yeah, this is super common. It's pretty much in... I will tell that phone. It's pretty much in every like long mane though. So if you're looking at like your pony plush right now, your Fluttershy, she's going to have it in her mane. Your Rarity, she's going to have it in her mane and tail. Um, Rainbow Dash will have it in the side mane. Yeah, anyone with length like that. It's pretty cheap too. You can buy it in like pretty big bulk rolls. I highly recommend it. Um, I also like to use it inside open wings. Um, but I, I do it as a combo. If I'm doing open Pegasus wings, I do the this stuff for the stability. It keeps the wing upright. But then I also do this to give it that like squish factor. So it still feels like a stuffed animal. Because I never want my plush to feel like they're not, like you, you're not allowed to touch them. Like, yeah, they're definitely like sculptures at this point. But I still want people to be able to hug them and enjoy them, right? So that's definitely stuff I take to cons take into consideration. So I get nice squishy to put inside mains, and it's lovely. Just getting everything in out here. Um, there we are. Ah, uh, yes. So I recently was working on my laying pony pattern. And I made a grave error of using my very old laying pattern, but it's worked out in your favor because I get to show you guys as well uh, what some changes to a pattern look like. So if any of you guys try that free pattern out and you see stuff you want to change, such as maybe a, a juicier booty or bigger hooves, or you want um, a, a smaller neck area, uh, it's not hard to do it just it can be a little bit intimidating 
you don't want to like for me my biggest thing is I don't like to waste my fabric it's also a lot of time so this can show you that yeah it's a little bit intimidating for sure to make those changes but it pays off in the long run if you just keep pushing yourself to learn and try I have some spaghetti hooves right here so I was working on this starlight glimmer the other week because I was like, ooh, I want a second plush to have for uh, Van Hoover for sale. And I embroidered the head. The head turned out great. It's my usual pattern. She's got a cute little snoot and ear eyes. The foam ears, so they're quite firm. This is my personal preference style-wise. Tiny Cat, what did you eat? She's having a little idiot puke. Don't do it. Oh. She's in the food bowl having a... Oh, God, why are, why are cats... Honey, you good? Yeah. Good chat. Good one, buddy. Sick. God, she's just, anyways, I guess. <sighs> anyways, so Glimmer. So her head turned out great. Her ears are great. She's got a cute horn and everything. But then I embroidered the oh. cutie marks. Tiny Cat is just, can you just hurry up, kid? She probably inhaled a minky puff, to be honest. It's more common than you think. She's fine. Um, she's just having a little puke. It's true. She's just... When she was super young, I, I get super concerned with her sometimes. If you guys have ever tuned into my, like, Twitch streams and stuff, if she's having a little puke, I just have to watch her. Because when she was super young, she ate a really long, like, elastic string that we don't know where she got it from. And she ended up having to have uh, major surgery for it. So now I'm, like, always concerned she's eating something really stupid. And I'm always watching her... Oh, now she's eating. Cool. She had a puke and now she's eating. <laughs> All right. Anyways, Tiny Cat's fine. Long story short, she hates her belly being touched now. Anyway, so I made the Starlight Glimmer Head. The eyes are great. Like, I did a gradient on the eyes, added the glitter. I was super happy. So then I embroidered the cutie marks, and I pull out a paper pattern to do the body, and I trace it out. And I didn't really think about it at the time because I was talking on stream and just kind of puttering. Like, I wasn't really thinking about it. And by the time I was partway done cutting it out, I realized it was my very, very first laying pattern. Like, this is OG laying pattern that I'm about to show you. And just knowing what I can make now, and then I look back at this, and I'm like, what was I thinking? It's still very cute, but, like, I see all the flaws from what my pattern is now. So, for me, the body is too short. And the butt's not big. And the hooves are way too small. The leg length is fine. But needs a longer body and bigger hooves. So these were just... So this was my first laying pattern. This is kind of a cool thing to show you guys. Um, yeah. She's still got like a cute butt. Once she has her tail on, she'll be fine. I'll sell her for super cheap. Because I'm still going to finish her. She still is okay. Someone will love her. But um, this was my first laying pattern. Very big heart. She'll still be very cute. Someone will love her. She does have hearts on her hooves. I did stitch little hearts on there. But I know. And so she has long legs because the body's supposed to be longer. I just... And I felt really stupid. So then I started working on a Twilight Sparkle. Because I was like, well, now I need to redo. Because I'm just like, oh. She's still going to look really good. Like, don't get me wrong. She's still okay. With, once she has her mane and tail, like, if you can picture it all, she'll be fine. But it's the fact that it doesn't reflect what I make now. Which So I just finished stuffing this body yesterday. She's very long. And I just wanted to show you guys that, like, don't be intimidated to make pattern changes. Because ultimately, they will just cause you to keep improving. Even if your pattern change is a total flop. Maybe you pattern change and now you have the flattest pancake button existence on your plush. Or you pattern change and your hooves are super wobbly and silly looking. You know what? That doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you still have tried. You've still made something and put the work in. Sorry, my... I don't know how to keep my screen on. Trying to keep my screen on for the chat here. Um, 
But yeah, make the changes. So like try that free pattern out. And once you're comfortable with that free pattern, add in some sweet new details, change it up, you know, don't be afraid to just do it because it's absolutely engineering and art, you know? Now I've got these cute floppy legs so that she can sit on your shoulder nicely. She's big. She's ready for hugs. She's got heart hooves too. You know, she's got a nice butt, but then she's got a nice area up here. That's where the tail will get anchored. Um, I personally like to do a bit of a thinner neck just because once the mane covers it, it just looks really slick. That's a personal preference. But I, I elongated the body on her, which is super scary to do because you're redoing all your pattern pieces to accommodate that, you know? It's intimidating. Pattern making is a bit scary. It's pretty much just do it, absolutely. I'm just gonna move, I'm just gonna move them out of here now. We're slowly getting to the sewing machine. I'm kind of leaving the machine stuff to the end because I have two big machines. I'm just kind of trying to get you guys like fired up that like you can do this. It's, you just, just go for it, man. Make the pattern changes, have fun. You know, worst case, you make a super floppy little cutie and best case, you make something super stunning and some people want to buy it, right? It's, it's awesome. And some of you might be wondering about this cat brush. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite tools. I use it to brush out all the seams, right? Where, get over here, Twilight. Give me your butt. Twilight, give me your butt. So you can see this very obvious seam along here, down her leg. Now it's a little bit more hidden compared to the other leg. So the joy of the cat brush is it's like hundreds of soft, tiny little needles. And what they're doing is going into the seam and pulling all that fur out that's stuck between the seam. A lot of fursuit makers do this as well. It's super common to do. And it just, it gives your plush a much sleeker look. And I do it to all of my girls. Give me your juicy boozy. Let me brush your booty. It puts the brush on the cheeks. But I do this to all of my girls. I brush all their juicy boosies. I brush all their seams out and that's just how you get just a lot sleeker plush and that's just one of those other things you start to think about as you make plush especially as like a I don't want to say professional plush maker but I guess that's what I should call myself because I take I take money for plushies I guess uh, but that's just things you start to think about as a professional plush maker is what more can you do to add value when you're making plush, whether it's for yourself, her butt is just on stream. It just don't quit. Her butt don't quit. Is this PG? Is this okay, Van Hoover? Do I need to censor this? I need to censor this. Um, but it's just always thinking about those little things as well that can improve your quality as a maker, whether that's brushing out your seams, which I do on all of my girls, even my past girls that were not as good as this. Because I'm always learning and moving forward, right? It just adds that extra wow factor that they look really smooth. Move her out of the way. God, she's big. She's like 24 inches long. She's going to be huge. I'm excited to finish her and send her. Somebody already got her and I'm like bought her. Yes, that's literally her. She's juicy. I would be okay with juicy Twilight being a meme. Okay, this is for machine, so I gotta, I'm doing this on my sewing desk, so I'm just kind of shuffling stuff. I can't say, you know what, it's a stuffed animal, guys, it's, it's okay. Moving some stuff around. Oh, everybody's in the way. I, look at this tiny Granny Smith I'm working on. What do we got? We got 15 minutes, we're fine. Look at this tiny Granny Smith. How precious is this angel? Never enough booty. That's like... So I have a weird thing, and I know Prodigy and chat will know what I'm talking about. This is the uh, luminometer. This is a thing with Lumi's plush. Every plush that I send out has to pass the luminometer test, and that means that she has to be able, the plush has to be able to hold this between her butt cheeks. It's a thing. 
So every plush I send out has to pass the luminometer test. It's just, it's just the way it is. Okay, so sewing machines. Let's talk about these because we've talked about some material stuff. What's kind of what's hot, and what's not. Um, we've talked about just kind of like stuff to work with to make it from pens such as like those cool heat pens. I should try some out. I just I'm very lazy and I what I do works and I don't have any issues with it. So it is what it is. You know, talked about good scissors, um, pattern making, uh, linking that free pattern. Thank you again so much for doing that. And also just like making your own or even altering the existing, like the free one, and just understanding how the pattern pieces go together. That's the biggest thing is once you get the hang of the pattern pieces, you can do anything with it. It is. It's a patent pending luminometer. Uh, it's how to measure your plush in Lumabells. That is the official uh, luminometer me unit of measurement is Lumabells. Give me your butt. Oh my God, Patrick, are you kidding me? So good. Um, so yeah, sewing machines. So this is one actually that my husband and father-in-law, they got this for me last year for my birth miss. It is called the Brother SE600. It's covered in stickers. Um, they're mostly uh, stream friendly, I think. They're pretty good, they're fine, they're fine. Um, so as you can see, it looks like a normal little sewing machine. I've got the thread up top here it threads like a normal machine and what's nice is most sewing machines nowadays are pretty standard with how they thread so it's nothing crazy um, they also all come with manuals which is super handy um, but what's really cool about this machine is this comes off right this piece comes off come here Oh shoot, I have stuff everywhere. I live in a condo, so everything is in pockets of areas. So this piece comes off, like the sewing arm, and then I can put on this giant piece here. Oh my god. Now it's just a gi extra giant sewing machine. Um, but I popped that on and now I have an embroidery machine. Wow. Um, the cool thing with this, with uh, the newer embroidery machines is that most of them are computerized. I'm using my laptop. So what's nice is it runs my files via USB. So I just slap this into my laptop, get my files, pop it back into here, bada bing, bada boom, hit the USB thing. And then I can start flipping through to all my different files. So I just have folders like on a computer. It's super handy. And say I want to make a uh, silver stream eyes. I have silver stream eyes right there and I have it in different sizes. The one thing I don't like is this doesn't specifically tell you the size, so I kind of have to double check it. There's my size. I can double check what it's going to look like in the hoop. So this only has a four inch by four inch hoop. That's the embroidery area. I know the hoop is bigger than four inches by four inches, but the actual embroidery area is only four by four, which is fine. It's generally, this is pretty much the primary machine I use for all of my plush. Um, super handy though. So say I want this big, silver stream eye and then I can get it as a preview silver stream eye say I don't want to work on her I want to make somebody else I go back to the home screen and then back to my folders and oh yeah this was a good one techie cutie you guys all know techie cutie um, I made her OC as a plush and I actually had her send me custom artwork of her OC's eyes so say I want to embroider that I would set it it shows me the eyeball and I can resize it a little bit. I can flip it, which is what a lot of plush makers do. So you'll notice the eye shine on plush, like the little, uh, these little white shines. They are mirrored on each side because we just mirror it 
on our machines. It's super handy. And yeah, you can move it around. So when you do this, moving it around on here, it moves it around on the actual machine as well. It's just a bunch of cool stuff. Embroidery machines are super smart. They're very intuitive. So this machine in particular I have, you can see here, is the Brother SE600. Um, I know quite a few people that have this exact machine. It is super, super user friendly. Oh, crumbs. Everything's, you know what? Machines just staying right there. Cool, 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 cool. No doubt, no doubt. Um, it's very user friendly though. Like, I had never embroidered before and this was very easy to set up. Um, you can buy a lot of your embroidery files on Etsy. If you Google on Etsy, like Pony Embroidery File or MLP Embroidery File, it'll come up with a lot of the characters and their cutie marks. Um, if you join Facebook groups for embroidery, um, like specifically for your brand of machine, so Brother, um, you can actually find a lot of... Um, yeah, that was me that did Techie Cuties OC. Thank you so much. I really had fun. She, I gave her heart hooves as well. A little something extra. Her OC was very interesting to plush because her mane, if you re re recognize her mane, it's like got weird side puffs. And I was like, how do I, how do I translate to 3D? It's so weird. But I think they did okay. But yeah, I would suggest joining Facebook groups as well. Even if you don't have a machine yet, you can join groups and ask questions and learn and check it all out, which is super handy. Um, I do have one other embroidery machine, which is behind the laptop. So I won't show it off, but it's big. I call her Big Chungus. And she is a Janome 500E. So that is a big machine. Um, I can't see anybody that's new into plush scooping one up right away. I got it because I got it on a good deal, actually, secondhand. And it has a... It's embroidery only, though. That's that's the difference. So I can't take off this piece and sew. It only does embroidery. So it's kind of a blessing and a curse that way. But what I can do with it is create much bigger embroidery so it has a maximum embroidery space of 11.9 by 7.9 i think yeah big chungus that's exactly why i named her that um but it's just got a really big embroidery area so that's what i used to make i don't know if any of you guys have seen my plush book i made the plush um oh man elements of harmony book where it actually opens up like it has the cover and it opens up and says once upon a time and then the middle part flips and then there's the finale page printed on fabric and then it closes as well. Um, so I made that and I printed that on, I printed the fabric custom and then I embroidered it all on Big Chungus. So embroidery is super handy, but you don't have to have it, like I said, like, oh, Tiny Cat's playing with a spring and it's cute. I love when they sit on the toy and then they're like beeping it with their back legs like an idiot. You're an idiot. But again, you don't need the embroidery machine to make cool plush. Like, embroidery is only a small portion of it. Like, if you... Oh, my God. Everything is just awful. Like, if you look at Punk Rarity, for instance, and see how much of her's actually embroidered, it's just her eyes and her cutie marks. If you get a steady hand and some patience, you can just applique it on like Firefly Twinkle Toes does. And the rest of her's machine stitched. Like, it comes down to skill. An embroidery machine doesn't mean you're a good maker. It does not. Just because you have an embroidery machine, it just means you had a bit of extra money. You need skills. If you don't have the skills, you know, you got to work on that. And that's where I really suggest trying out that free pattern, guys. Give it a try. Get some fleece or whatever at your local Joann's or Michael's or something. It's just awesome. Um, 3D printed. I really want to work with somebody that does 3D printing. I don't personally do 3D printing because um, I would really like 3D printing for, well, I want to make a, a silver, a large silver stream for a friend and I want to make silver streams necklace, but I want it to be accurate and I don't want to make it out of plush. I would love to get it 3D printed. So I need someone to model it and print it for me. I don't mind painting it, but I need that. Um, I would love to get stuff like gems 3D printed too. Like if I make, um, another Princess Celestia or whoever, I would love to get that 3D printed, like the gems on her necklace and stuff. Right, so I did talk about this when we first started. Um, if you don't have an embroidery machine, this is kind of a crummy example because I wasn't very good at it at the time. Tiny cat, you're so cute. You can do this thing called applique, 
Um, also look up, I'm gonna just drop it, Firefly. Firefly, god dang it, Twinkle Toes. Check out Firefly Twinkle Toes on DeviantArt. They do not embroider. They don't embroider. They do a very good applique. So this is my, this is what I used to do. So it's very bad, very bad, but it shows you. Yep, so this is free hand machine embroider basically. It's called applique and it's satin stitching various layers of colored fabric down, right? I was not very good at it as you can tell, but it's what I had at the time. I worked with what I had and you know, I was really proud when I did do this. I've never done hand embroidery, like actually just hooping it and then hand doing it. But uh, if you check out Jack Larson on Twitter, he does all of his plush with hand embroidery and it is incredible. Absolutely incredible. 10 out of 10. Recommend checking it out. Um, yeah, do you guys, we only have a couple more minutes. So if you guys have any other questions, um, yeah applique like you again you don't need a fancy machine you don't need the embroidery machine mr larson yes larson but that's about it i mean the biggest thing is just practicing sewing like get a pattern buy a pattern make a pattern whatever you want and just build like have fun with it that's the biggest thing is enjoying what you make because that's how you'll make really good stuff. Um, I I don't know. I would recommend my brother SE600 because it's the combo. So you get both worlds. But you could also just check out uh, via reviews on different sewing websites on Google. You don't have to spend a ton. Like spending 100 bucks at Walmart will probably get you an okay little machine for a while. Oh, absolutely hand sewing. Um, there's a ton of it. It's not my favorite part. But yeah, thank you guys for hanging out. And I th hope I recorded this. I do stream. I do stream on Twitch a lot. So if you guys check me out on Twitter, I do stream periodically through the week. So I do show a lot of my processes as I go along. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Find me on Twitch at some point and come hang out and learn more weird, hilarious sewing tips and techniques. Fairly well.